In this next series of videos, I'm going to be talking about isomerism and stereochemistry and really get you thinking about the spatial properties of molecules. So up to this point, we've talked a little bit about atoms and bonds, things like that. But really, in this next series of videos, we're going to consider molecules as spatial entities and some of their spatial properties. So this is sort of the next logical step in the progression of talking about chemical structure where we've discussed Lewis structures, resonance, and MO theory, and now we're going to move on to discussing stereochemistry, which is the study of the spatial properties of molecules as distinct from their chemical properties. To start things off, we're interested in the relationship between two molecules as stereoisomers, or their spatial relationship, and really determining this relationship is easy if you follow a process, and there's a very systematic process to determine the stereoisomeric relationship between two molecules. The first big question is, do the molecules have the same connectivity? And then we'll talk about the molecules being superimposable, if they do have the same connectivity. If they are superimposable, then we know they're identical molecules. If not, then we go on to ask, are they mirror images of each other? and that will allow us to determine what kind of stereoisomers there are. So we're going to use this chart down the line to really identify these four kinds of isomers, homomers, enantiomers, diastereomers, and constitutional isomers. That order is from most similar to least similar. Molecules that have the same formula but different structures are called constitutional isomers. So take a look at the two molecules you see here. In the molecule on the left, what we can see is that there's a double bond between C and O here, and the oxygen is just bound to one carbon, and that's it. However, on the right-hand side, this oxygen is bound to a hydrogen and doesn't have a double bond. It has a single bond to its carbon. So you might think that these molecules are completely different. However, what you should notice is that they both have identical molecular formulas, C4H6O. So in this respect, they are identical at least in the property of molecular formula. Their structures, however, are different. So what we can say in general is that molecules can have some properties in common without being identical. What is the criterion for two molecules being identical? Well, really there is only one, and that is two molecules are identical if and only if they can be superimposed on one another. In other words, we can take the three-dimensional structure of one and perfectly superimpose it or overlay it on the structure of the other. Here are two drawings of two molecules that you might think are not identical at first glance because on the left the chlorine is coming out, however on the right it's going back. But if we take a look at this video, what you'll see is that if we take the molecule on the right and rotate it around, we've generated the molecule on the left with the bromine in, in the back. Similarly, if we rotate around again, we can take the molecule on the left and turn it into the one on the right. So really what we're looking at are two representations of the same molecule. Here's another example. Molecules A and B, you may look at at first glance and say, well, these look identical, at least from the perspective of their connectivity. CH3 is connected to a C, which is connected to an O and a C. This C is connected to oxygen and carbon. And the same pattern of connectivity is observed in this case. However, an important difference is at this bond right here. In the left-hand structure, in A, that bond is coming out towards us. In the right-hand structure, that bond is going away from us. And so we might suspect that these molecules are different, and in fact, they are we call them stereoisomers. They have identical connectivity from the perspective of just a two-dimensional map of what's connected to what, but they differ in their three-dimensional spatial properties and in their shape. So returning to the example of A and B, again, the key difference is that these two molecules have distinctly different molecular shapes. In the left-hand case, this oxygen is coming out towards us. In the right-hand case, in B, it's going away from us. Here's a little bit more abstract example of this kind of stereoisomerism where I've just taken some blocks and you'll notice that the connectivity of these is all the same. Blue is connected to gray, 
Gray is connected to gray, gray to red, and red to white is the same in both cases. However, the shapes of the two structures are different. In the right-hand structure, the white square is pointing up. In the left-hand structure, the white square is pointing down. And these shapes, in fact, are stereoisomeric.